What up, peeps? Team Money up in the hizzy on this fine Monday evening. And, um, so I wanted to shoot a video, um, of my top, uh, my top, uh, horror TV shows, which is the theme this week. But I don't really, to be fair, like, I don't really think I have 10. Um, I definitely maybe barely own 10 t horror TV shows. Um, but I just, I, I'm, so I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm just going to go with five, uh, for the week because I feel like I'm very familiar with these five TV shows. I like them a lot. A lot of them are childhood favorites and, um, well, the, well about half of them are childhood favorites. So, and I just like, I know a lot about every season and I just, I just felt like five was, I, I'm, uh, I'm very familiar with these five seasons, so, alright, so, no more bullshit, let's just cut right into it, so, coming in at number five, <clears throat> um, it's gonna be American Horror Story, and this is a little tricky one because it's kind of like uh, an anthology series or every every season as you all may well know um, uh, let me turn the music down a little bit here it's throwing me off all right um I'm actually just gonna turn it off all right so yeah every season I think they're on season five a hotel just ended. Uh, for American Horror Story, so every season is completely something completely new, so it might as well be like <laughs> it's a different show with the same name, but anyway, so I went with American Horror Story because I love um, season one, two, Asylum, um, Freak Show, I love, I wasn't crazy about Coven, and in all honesty, I wasn't, I didn't finish watching Hotel yet, so... Um, but I love this show. I think it's really creative and especially the first two seasons, Asylum and The Haunted House, uh, the original season, um, are definitely my favorites. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess the, like this, this one, uh, season one takes place, um, they call it, I think the murder house. And, well, you guys probably are familiar with this, so, um, I won't really go into details, but yeah. So, American Horror Story, number five, um, coming in at number four, I have, uh, Tales from the Dark Side. This show is awesome, um, I've been watching it for a long time, uh, and I remember when I was at school and college I was I had a craving for it one night and I was like I wonder if it's out on DVD and sure enough I think they had just been released so there are four seasons um, from Tales from the Dark Side I think the first one is my favorite um, the first one has like a, a, uh, the trick-or-treat episode I believe um, and in in the closet it's called um, directed by Tom Savini all of the Tom Savini if you guys get uh, the Tales from the Dark Side series. Look for the the episodes that Tom Savini uh, directed in particular. They're all really good. Um, and the pilot, I think, is directed by um, George A. Romero, too. So um, this was a show, I think, executive produced and directed by George Romero. And uh, Tom Savini was also guest director on several episodes. Um, but, I mean, some of my favorite episodes... Um, from Tales from the Dark Side are definitely the the trick or treat one with the goblin, uh, Halloween with the old man. I the pilot episode um, where the old man invites the trick or treaters to the house to find his hidden jewels, and then um, I really like the episode with the grandpa who is dead, but he doesn't. With um, it's starring what's his name. Um, Christian Slater, I think, and, uh, his grandfather is dead, but doesn't know it, and so he starts rotting, and, uh, it's just funny, man, there's one scene where he loses his nose, <laughs> and, uh, I think his nose falls off at the dinner table or something, but just some classic, really good, um, good stuff there, uh, 
The thing about Tales from the Dark Side is that I feel like it's really hit or miss. Like, the episodes that are good are really good, but there are, there's so much junk in between, and that's the problem with the show, in my opinion, is that it's, um, it's, it's select. Um, but again, yeah, those episodes, I think it's called, like, In the Closet, the one with the, um, the girl who, who rents a room from this, like, prestigious professor or something like that, and, uh, she come to find out there's something living in the closet of her room, and, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just great, I don't want to spoil it, but In the Closet, Trick or Treat, the one with, uh, Christian Slater's great, these are just some episodes that come to mind, um, but overall, yeah, Tales from the Dark Side is pretty good, um, I highly recommend it, it's a pretty good TV show, I think from the mid-80s, it actually aired before Tales from the Crypt, so, um, and it was a relatively short run, four seasons, but, uh, and they're all good, the one, the season three pilot episode, or the, uh, first episode on that, in the carnival there, uh, with all the Dracula and all the cool little creatures from the, just a good bag, a mixed bag of, uh, good horror goodies, and of course that was kind of in George Romero's prime, and he was, you know, executive producer of the show, and he had coming off of Creep Show and stuff like that, so the fact that he was, like, a heavy hitter, he had a lot, he was one of the main, uh, heads behind this TV show, um, made it good, because it was in its prime, so, for sure, uh, highly suggest Tales from the Dark Side, and that was number four on my list. Coming in at number three, I had to do it, is The Walking Dead, and also, I just grabbed random seasons, all of these that I'm showing you, I have everything, every, uh, season from, um, from every show, but I just, there's not really any sense. I Actually, I probably should have grabbed them all so I could refer to specific episodes and that sort of thing, but uh, Walking Dead, been watching it since the pilot episode, love the show, um, you know, I love the special effects, I love the story, I never read the comics, so I don't really know, I can't really base it off that, but I enjoy the show, man, I think, uh, I think it's great, um, you know, I love... I love, um, what's his name, um, Michael Rooker, and, uh, and his role with the, the whole governor tangent, that was great, and, um, you know, I think, I, I, in the beginning, I thought season one was the strongest, season two was a little weaker, season three was great, and then every, you know, everything's great, season four is great, season five is great, I think we're in, uh, what are we in, season six now, and, um, and yeah, I'm loving it. I can't wait till it picks back up again here in February. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a good show, you know? Very good storytelling and um, good special effects, good characters. I love, you know, I love them all for the most part. I, f I find Morgan is pretty annoying. I don't like Morgan's new outlook on, on, uh, on things. But anyway, yeah, I don't need to really go into detail of Walking Dead. I feel most people know what that show's about, so... That's number three on my list. Uh, now the two, top two, coming in at number two is Are You Afraid of the Dark? This TV show is a childhood favorite of mine. Um, my dad told me about this. I remember the night that it aired. And um, the first episode I remember seeing was the one uh, with the clown in the carnival. And... Um, they knock the nose off the clown, and then all of a sudden, like, the ghost of the clown um, follows them to their house and, and haunts them to get the nose back. But there's just a lot of good... I have the first, I think... I, I have the first four seasons of Are You Afraid of the Dark. After that, I stopped watching. I kind of grew up and out of it. Because it is kind of like a child... A, a childish uh, show. It's very nostalgic for me. And, you know, I like it. Some of the episodes, I think, are creepy. And I love the characters... Uh, in this show, like, Dr. Vink, I think his name is, with a v v v with a v v v um, with a v v v and, um, who's the other guy? Sado, accent on the O, um, just good classic stuff, man, uh, and then you've got, you know, uh, the, the four kids who, Make, are made up of the Mid Midnight Society. And this also changed. I think Tucker was added later on. 
and uh, the cast of the, of the kids around the, the just the way the, the whole feel of this show especially being a kid and if you have like young kids of your own like definitely show them this stuff man like just how the the whole storytelling aspect of it like it starts out the mid, midnight society the kids gather around the campfire they throw the dust in and they it rotates between each character they, uh, each kid tells a different tale every week or whenever however it aired I think it was once a week and uh a different story was told each week, but there are some gems, man. The the pinball machine episode, I remember really liking. There's a Nosferatu um, episode as well. It's kind of like a a take on the uh, the whole Nosferatu story. It's a really good one. The Phantom Cab, I think that was like the pilot episode, and there are just a lot of really good ones. Um, the Ghost House. Um, with the little girl and the house next door, her aunt's house, I believe, or something. There's, like, an abandoned, uh, excuse me, house next door, but, like, um, and it's haunted by ghosts and whatever. There are just a lot of good ones, but, like, Laughing in the Dark, that's the one that I was talking about with the clown. I remember Laughing in the Dark, I thought it was the, the pilot, but according to this, it's the Phantom Cab. Um, but, yeah, uh, let's see. Jake and the Leprechaun, um, Pinball Wizard. There are just there are so many, and this is only season one. Like I said, after after season four, I don't really know. I remember there was like a double episode too. I believe it's in season four where um, it's got like Doctor Vink and Sardo, uh, some of the main themes from from the show or characters rather, um, and it's like an hour long episode. I think it's in season four. And I remember that one being good. And, you know, there's always, like, a moral to these tales, you know. Like, a lot of it being you reap what you sow and that sort of thing. Um, but just really good, you know, like, kind of like uh, the goose along the Goosebumps line. Kind of like, definitely not, like, hard hardcore stuff at all. But just some good classy, or I mean classic uh, tales, for sure. So, Are You Afraid of the Dark? This aired on Nickelodeon in the early 90s. But you can get this uh, these sets i think are pretty expensive but i think they might have direct source uh cookie jar entertainment whatever that is um is the distributor for this and i think they might have repressed more of these so i think you can still get them on amazon and then if not there's another way too that i think they have like a bunch of dvdrs uh that the nickelodeon website is selling as well or they were which were a lot cheaper so, if you're at all interested, uh, you can, I think, still pick those up. But, yeah. So, uh, coming in at number one is my all-time favorite uh, horror TV show. Um, and it's got to be Tales from the Crypt. I'm a huge, huge fan of this show. Um, I love it. And the funny thing about it is, when I was a kid, all I don't I, there wasn't a single episode that I remember watching. All I remembered was The Crypt Keeper. And... When I was in college, I think, like, my sophomore year, I just had this, all of a sudden, this, like, craving for this show, and I wanted to revisit it so bad, and it's funny, because I, it wasn't until then that I actually watched the episodes, and I could talk about this show for hours. The first five seasons, in my opinion, six and seven kind of are shitty, in all honesty, in my opinion, but the first five are terrific. There are more strong episodes than there are weak in every episode. I pulled out season two because it is my favorite this uh this season has some of the best episodes in my opinion um some of my favorite episodes are uh three's a crowd that's such a good episode about the guy who is super paranoid that his wife is cheating on him and his pregnant wife's cheating on him and he doesn't know that she's pregnant and um it's just kind of like a, a character study like but it just it, and these shows were only, I think, like a half hour long each each episode. Uh, yeah, I don't think they were an hour. But, um, and she throws a... It has, like, probably the best twist ever. She throws this party for him and, um, like, a celebration. I don't want to really spoil this, so I don't know how much I should tell. But check out Three's a Crowd. It's an amazing episode. Um, some other good ones are... Uh, <laughs> let me just open this up. I really like the one with Felicity. I think it's season four, where uh, Doctor Getz goes to, um, and it's got that woman, um, 
with the squeaky voice who passed away. Zelda Rubenstein is in it. Um, and I forget the actor's name, too. He's a big, famous actor. But uh, they go to that... Um, to this old woman's house because her daughter... Um, I guess they just they need the help of a child psychologist, and the guy plays a psychologist. So they go to this old woman's house to help her daughter, supposedly, and it turns out that her daughter is really something else. And uh, I don't want to spoil it, but check it out. I forget. I think it's called The New Arrival is the name of that episode. It's great. It's one of my faves. But on um, season two, Dead Right, episode number one, starring Demi Moore, is amazing. Um... It's a quick synopsis. A gold digger marries a slob in hopes of gaining an inheritance. Um, the Switch is a classic one. All of these are classic with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, Cutting Cards, classic with Lance Henriksen. Till Death. These are all great. You get Lower Birth, uh, the story of the ta of the Crypt Keeper. Um, Television Terror, one of my all-time favorite episodes for sure. Um... A TV journalist gives an on-air tour of a haunted house, and him and his cameraman go, and they're filmed live inside of it, and uh, all hell breaks loose. Basically, it's it's a, an amazing episode. Television Terror is one of my one of my faves for sure. Um, I love in season five. I love the 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 episode with Tim Curry. I think is in it. And um, he plays like three or four different characters. It's a great episode. I think it's called Death of Some Salesman classic um there are just so many good episodes and i highly suggest um or recommend you watch seasons one through five those are in my opinion the best i had all seven at once at one point um but i just i didn't really dig six and seven i think they went downhill the quality of of the episodes went from like a 10 to like a two um so the show just kind of went downhill in my opinion i've seen a lot of people say agree that seven is season seven is the weakest but six a lot of people like apparently but for me it's one through five those are those are the best um and there are you know there are cameos or not cameos there are a lot of these episodes feature a lot of famous um a lot of famous actors and actresses um you know you've got some of the ones i've mentioned already and then there's tom hanks i mean you name it uh brad pitt is in an episode, um, it's just, there's a lot of celebrities, um, and of course, the Crypt Keeper, the whole feel of this show, like I, like I said, like, the only thing I remembered from my childhood on HBO is watching the Crypt Keeper, and that scene with the, like, the tire swing, and the whole introduction, when they, you know, zoom in first person on the, uh, I don't know if it's first person, but on the house there, the, the Crypt uh, I love it. Just the whole feel of the show and the humor of the Crypt Keeper and the tales. That's the amazing thing is, like, I wanted to revisit this show because I remembered how cool the Crypt Keeper is. And then I discovered that it's an actually, it's actually an amazing show. And some of these episodes, man, are, like, top notch. Top notch. So, yeah, uh, Tales from the Crypt, definitely my number one pick. Um, some TV shows that I could mention that I would like to see... Uh, our thriller, I think it was uh, featuring Alfred Hitchcock. Um, I'd like to get into that. I'd like to get into that Todd and the Book of Pure Evil that Moods had recommended on one of his videos a while back. Um, I'd like to see that. Um, oh, what's the Twilight Zone? I mean, I'm not even really familiar with the Twilight Zone. And I, I know a lot of people say that's the best show of all time for horror, so... Um, that's, that's one that I really do need to get into. The X-Files is another. I actually just bought, um, Amazon had, uh, season one deal of the day of several months back, probably like a year ago now. So I picked the, the, the entire series up for 70 bucks. I know the Blu-rays are out now, but whatever. Um, so yeah, the X-Files I want to get into. Uh, another TV show that I, ha that I forgot to mention that I love and I actually have the, I think the Ghosts, um version of is um unsolved mysteries classic i i do have like one little ghost segment of that on dvd those are a lot of those are rare and go for big bucks but unsolved mysteries is classic um 
yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of mentioning some other shows that I'm either interested in or that I enjoy, um, just because I couldn't come up with a bona fide top ten. So I felt more comfortable just sticking with the uh, five. So, yeah, and you can get these Tales from the Crypt uh, seasons for pretty cheap now. I think um, 14 bucks you can get them for at FYE and probably get them even cheaper on Amazon. So, um so yeah, uh, I guess that's that's it, guys. That's my top five um, favorite horror TV shows of all time. I've got American Horror Story, uh, Tales from the Dark Side, The Walking Dead, Are You Afraid of the Dark, and Tales from the Crypt. So, and yeah, in that order. And um, yeah, uh, going back to American Horror Story, because I was kind of like all over the place there in the beginning. It took me a while to get my groove. Um, I really like The Murder House, which is this season. Um, the characters in this are amazing. You've got that handicapped girl. Um, God, what's her name? Uh, it's not going to say it right here. But she's just really good. She's also in Coven. Um, and then her mother, um, Jessica something. Uh, Dylan McDermott is in it. Connie Britton. It's just really good. And it's also got, uh, what's her name, sister. Star. Oh, there's another. Bates Motel is a good show, too. I actually have all those seasons um, on on Blu-ray. So, um, But anyway, yeah, this is... If you were to haven't seen this show, I would, I would highly recommend you check out the first season uh, first. Because it's just... It's about this family that moves into this haunted house. And um, the neighbors, who are played by Jessica... God, I can't remember her last name. It's going to kill me. But uh, Jessica Lang. And, um, her handicapped daughter. But anyway, you know, uh, craziness ensues in the murder house. And, um, there's a cool twist at the end of the season, too. Um, I also, like, really do like the second season, um, in the asylum. And the guy who, um, I forget his name now. The kid who plays Tate in this episode. He's in all, every season. He's, like, a main, Peters is his last name, I think. Um, he's a good actor, a very good actor, and, um, yeah, it just bothers me that I can't remember these guys' names, not that it matters, but anyway, so yeah, that's my list, guys, thanks for watching, have a good night!